Hi, it's Jeff Chalmers here from discoverdoublebase.com. Uh, welcome to another one of my video lessons. If you're interested in more of these, you can go and check out the website. Well, today I wanted to answer a really important question and one that I've been asked quite a few times now, and that's how can I tell if I'm out of tune? Because in my lessons, I'm always saying to you, you know, you should be carefully monitoring your intonation. And I'm sure that if you're playing out of tune, that you have an awareness that things aren't right. But how can we actually tell? How can we you know, work it out so we can make corrections. So I'm gonna cover that and I'm gonna show you some great little exercises and ideas that will help improve your intonation. So let's look at the details and get you playing in tune. The first thing we need to think about is intervals. And an interval is simply a measurement of distance between two pitches. And we usually think in terms of semitones and tones when we're building scales. Now, I don't want to get into too much detail for you here, um, but you should certainly, if you're not, if you don't understand the way that scales are built, I would recommend uh, doing some research on that. But if we think about an interval as a measurement of distance, that interval, that measurement needs to be correct. It doesn't matter what the starting pitch is, if the next note is going to be in tune with the starting pitch, the distance has to be right. Well, with that in mind, it makes sense to start with a reference note that you know is accurate and is actually tuned up to uh, A440, which is the standard tuning for our, uh, our A string, and then the other strings are in tune with it. So if you have a, an electronic tuner, the best thing is, of course, make sure you're in tune first of all. Now, if we use one of these open strings, we want to hear if the next note is out of tune. So let's have a, let's have a listen. Now that sounds okay to me. I'm playing a perfect fifth, which is the open D to an A. And when the note's in tune, it doesn't have much tension. There's no kind of dissonance there. Let's play it with the bow. And the reason why I choose to use the bow, particularly for this, is that you'll hear the intonation more, you'll hear the notes more accurately, so you'll be able to make adjustments easier. Let's hear them together. And that sounds okay. Now what if I play slightly flat? How does it sound? Now you can hear there's a sort of uglier noise to it. And I think about it in terms of tension. I can feel that that sound wants to raise up. Okay, what if it's higher than the actual target pitch? Again, it sounds horrible. It's only a tiny amount out. So I think about terms of, uh, I think about tuning in terms of, of tension, of dissonance. The more dissonant the note is, uh, or the sound is, it just doesn't sound right, then it means that you'll be playing out of tune. So those notes all sound okay. A bit sharp, I make the correction. And it can just be as small as your finger is on the wrong angle and I actually overshot it slightly, and then I went back. And I'm really carefully listening. Now, what I'd like you to do is when you're playing something, uh, maybe with the bow, what have you, is to just make sure that when you do correct a note that's out of tune, that you think in practice term, when you're practicing, whether it's sharp or flat before you make the correction and then test yourself. So say I play out of tune and I'm playing a fifth. It doesn't sound quite right. Think to myself, does it, does it need to go down? And then test it. Now maybe I'll be a bit lower. And I can hear that drum. And I'm back in tune. So by carefully monitoring whether you're in tune or not and then making those corrections in the practice room it'll soon become uh, second nature because double bass obviously is a fretless instrument and it's very challenging to play in tune and it's not like you'll reach a stage where you'll suddenly be always playing in tune what you'll be doing is you'll be playing in tune much more often and when you do get a note slightly out you'll be making these small corrections which just become habit you just do them without even thinking about it but I think to get there, you should really be thinking, is it out of tune first, and which way is it sharp or is it flat? Now, remember to reference against an open string. And also, you can use harmonics as well. So maybe you're playing 
uh, G, G and D. And if I want to check if I'm in tune, okay, the hands are above the right notes, so that D is okay. And now I can reference the G. It's a bit sharp. That's okay. And you can see there I was a little flat on the octave. And now I just round that off. Let's see what it sounded like if I was a bit sharp. Well, I hope that's given you an idea about what you should be looking for. What I'd like to do now is to give you some quick ideas about how you can improve your tuning whilst you're in the practice room. Okay, well, I've already mentioned that using the bow is fantastic because it really highlights the sound so you can hear more clearly. But if you're playing pizzicato, there is also uh, something you can do which will help you uh, hear the notes more accurately, and that's to play nearer the end of the fingerboard. Really let those notes pop out, play them assertively. And then when you make corrections, just think about whether it's sharp or flat. And there's a big difference between playing that way than playing like this kind of thing, particularly if you've got the bow in your hand and you're playing pizzicato at the same time. It's it's just not as clear, so you won't be able to make as an accurate uh, decision about whether it's out of tune or not. Well, the next thing is that when you are playing in tune, the bass seems to really open up and resonate very clearly. Um, and when you're not playing in tune, it doesn't seem to work quite as well. Um, let me give you a, an, an example. For instance, if I play the open G, if I play the note G here, so I've got the A harmonic and then down to the note G, so there's A, a flat and G and you can see when I hit the G this string starts resonating in sympathy and I'll check is the pitch right because this G is in tune because it's the open one and yeah it's it's there that's okay but when you're out of tune it doesn't actually set the other strings resonating as, as well and, and when you're playing in tune everything starts to work a little clearer so that's something that you should be thinking about and of course it's another reason to make sure that you're in tune is that you're you'll be projecting the sound much better another thing that you can do is we've mentioned about the open strings as being reference points i think it's really important that at some stage you start um, practicing with backing tracks or with drone notes or recordings or or of course other musicians something that you know is already in tune. So you can go into the uh, Discover Double Bass toolbox if you're an email subscriber, and there's a whole collection of one, two octave scales and arpeggios in major, minor, and dominant seventh um, forms. And if you're playing along with them and it doesn't sound right, then of course you're out of tune and you need to slow right down and work out what you're doing. But I always find that playing with another instrument or along with some kind of backing track can be really useful. Now, what about using an electronic tuner? This is something, a question I get asked quite, uh, quite a lot as well. I think tuners can be okay at the very start, just to help you with the very basics maybe of dividing the hand shape. But I'm not a huge fan of using them as you develop. I really wouldn't recommend it um, any more than just a very basic, you know, help you to help you get your hand shape together at the start. But if you start to come to rely on it, you'll spend all your practice time looking down, maybe it's a clip on one at the bridge, looking at the note, and you're looking for the answer, you're not listening for the answer. So I think that's a really important thing that maybe they do have their place just when you start out, but I think as you develop, you shouldn't be uh, coming to rely on it as a crutch. Well, another great tip, and you'll have heard me talk about this before in previous lessons, uh, is that it really helps to sing the intervals that you're playing, sing the notes, try and hear them. Because if you have a target note that you're aiming for, then you're likely to hit it. If you're just kind of guessing and you don't really know what it's supposed to sound like, then you're gonna struggle. So always try and sing when you play, particularly when you're working on your intonation and your scales and your arpeggios. I think that's very useful. And just make sure that you can hear that interval before you get there. Okay, I think that's all I'd like to talk about really today, but I just wanted to finish off by, by pointing something out that the ideas and suggestions that I've just given you are really for use in the practice room. 
Now, when you're on a gig, if you're constantly thinking about intonation, then all of your playing will suffer because your right hand technique will suffer, you're, you won't be able to get involved in the music. And really, you need to reach the point where you're following your intuition. So, and I think if you start thinking about tuning all the time, then it can, I don't know, it can become a bit of a negative thing. So spend some time practicing, learn the corrections, and then when you get out there on the gig, just have fun, and don't worry about whether your tuning is absolutely perfect. Uh, when you get back in the practice room, that's the time that you should be working on it. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the video lesson today. Uh, if you have, maybe you'd like to let me know by pressing like. It's really great for me and it helps me reach more people with these video lessons. And of course, if you've got any ideas about tuning, about the way that you hear it and describe it, and maybe about the way that you correct your tuning, any ideas that I haven't, I haven't covered in this lesson, you could leave a comment below the video and it would be great to hear from you. So keep practicing and I'll see you in the next Discoverable Bass video lesson.